Good evening, my friend. Welcome to WW Radio Live. Man, I love that music. Uh, thank you, DJ Technoid, Ricky Reed, for that mix. And thank you for joining me tonight. If you're watching live, I appreciate you being here. Sit back, relax, tag, and invite a friend and grab a snack. Because tonight, once again, is going to be all about you. And if you're watching on replay, please don't forget to join us every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, right here on WW Radio Live. And turn on notifications both on the WW Radio page on Facebook and in the clubhouse, because you never know when and from where I may be live next. For example, next week, may not be able to do a show on Wednesday night, but I will be live, not from Walt Disney World, not from here in the home studio, but I'll be live from New York, not Saturday night, but live from New York, Comic-Con, from Thursday through Sunday, I'll be sharing stories, reels, pictures, video, maybe even go live if I can on Facebook. I'll be sharing the stories and reels over on Instagram.com slash Lou uh, New York Comic Con has become uh, a tradition over the last few years. Take my son up. We go up for a few days. Um, check out some of the panels. Check out the show floor. And I'll be sharing some stuff with you as well. So uh, I'm still in recovery mode from my Momentum Weekend Workshop this past weekend and uh, getting ready to move right on into the next thing. A little bit still in zombie mode from uh, four and a half days and nights of an amazing, amazing event because, not because of me, but because of the folks who are there. I see a couple of you asking if I'm going to do a New York meetup. Um, I'm not planning on doing anything like official just because I've got um, panels and presentations and interviews and stuff lined up and mostly spend my time on the show floor. I've got a couple of events at night that I'm going to. One of those events at night may or may not involve Nobu. I'm just saying it's tradition. It needs, I'm just here for the food. I like, I have in my mind, we're going to talk about traditions tonight. Nice segue, Mangello. I have in my mind, it's like when you go to Disney, right? The things that you need to eat. So hot dog, knish, a good New York bagel. Like, I can't wait. Like a pretzel on a street corner. There's a pizza place we always go to. There's this cool little noodle house that we hit every time. And I took my son to Nobu last time we there were there don't ask me about what the bill came out to be but it was um it was incredible uh jeff c i did just see you just made it home uh thank you i'm happy you made it home i'm happy that you had some time uh in walt disney world jeff c an amazing incredible presenter uh talked about ai but more importantly he's just a really good dude and a good friend and i'm grateful for you being there brother uh if you are watching for the very first time whether you're watching on facebook or on youtube thank you welcome let me know where you're watching from and tell me your favorite restaurant in walt disney world because it is all about uh the food so i apologize for not getting a show out this week again i was in the uh the midst, the throes of momentum and was not able to get anything out. I'll get a, an archive show out tomorrow and certainly get back on schedule uh, again on, <clears throat> excuse me, Monday. But I was just was talking about some of those traditional things we like to eat <clears throat> maybe when we go to Walt Disney World. But it got me thinking earlier today and actually a conversation I had with someone at Momentum about, you know, I think we all have them whether we sort of recognize them or consciously seek them out, I think we all have our traditions, sometimes borderline superstitions of things that we have to do every single time we go to, we'll talk about Walt Disney World, it could be Disneyland, wherever your, your traditions take you. But I want to hear from you. I want to hear about your um the things that you must do every time you go, whether you are a local that goes all the time, whether you get to come, you know, once every few years. And I think when I think about traditions and sometimes they are superstitions and I will profess and confess some of my own, it's funny how they happen and it's funny how they come to be. Sometimes they happen because there are things we did 
with our family, right? Going to Disney World as a kid with our parents. It's just this thing that you do, the place that your dad wanted to go eat every single time. So it's the, the tradition that you carry on. Sometimes we form them as parents with our kids or just they're the ones that are very personal to us as well. So whether it's, you know, we'll, we can go through, you know what, rather than sort of try and bullet point them out, um, I want you to share yours. I think for a lot of people, there's the traditional first ride or the last ride. Whenever you go to Walt Disney World, there's that thing that you have to go and do first. Maybe it's something that you collect. Every time that you go, you get a pin, a souvenir, a magnet, a Christmas ornament. Uh, if there's a photo that you need, oh, I should have gotten this ready. So here's one. So when I should have, I wish I had this picture ready. I'll see if I can find it while I am riffing here a little bit. Um, when I first went to Walt Disney World in November 1971, um, my parents took a um, a photo of me on Main Street USA. Really, like, well-dressed. Here, I can, I found it. I can pop this in here. There, oh, there you go. So this is me in November of 1971. Uh, clearly, my mom dressed me. Sweet shoes, digging those big bell-bottom jeans, that fancy shirt, um, and clearly my mom didn't believe in cutting my hair, but that was in front of the the watch shop, <clears throat> excuse me, on Main Street, USA. And and as I got older, uh, let me see if I can find some of these other ones while I'm doing this. <clears throat> excuse me. I found that picture, and I took, when my daughter was born, I took her and I put her there in that spot. And it, like the box, the spot sort of became its own thing. And I wasn't just going back and taking that picture of my kids and my daughter, but I was recreating that picture for myself. I would do it when my first book came out and I would do it when my son was born. And then what ended up happening was other people were sort of replicating the photo in that spot, right? This is what community, this is what family is all about. Let me see if I can find... So this is a really bad picture. I, I don't know why I'm going to show this to you other than the fact that I love you and that I trust you. Don't just don't look at how I'm dressed or how ridiculous I, I look. But that was when I first started to recreate that photo. And then some other folks. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can find one pretty quickly. Um, I don't I don't I don't know who, who this is, but like. Other folks started to go back and they would take their trivia book or they would take like a WWE Radio or Disney World trivia t-shirt and go back and um, and recreate that, that photo in the spot. So I want to hear from you. I want to hear what some of your traditions are. Is there a certain food that you have to eat every single time? When I go to Disneyland, I have to get a chimichanga. I have to get a cozy cone. I have to get a corn dog, but only from the Little Red Wagon. I don't know why that tradition started, but it just sort of like happened kind of like by accident. Uh, maybe there's something that you do. Maybe you go into fantasy land and you've got to sort of make your attempt at pulling the sword from the stone, which I've, I've made the attempt before. Never actually pulled the sword from the stone. Uh, maybe you... Like I know in Disneyland, a lot of people go and they'll see Mr. Toad and they have to rub Mr. Toad's head when they walk through the queue of Mr. Toad. Is there like a statue that you have to touch? Um, I, it's something else, and this came up in conversation with somebody, it's the red card. Like the quest to try and get the red card in the queue, so it's a way that Disney sort of helps to measure wait times. Some people want to try and get the red card as a tradition. Some people avoid the red card. They're like, no, it's bad luck to get the red card. That's where I think some things go from tradition to superstition. Like for me, when I walk out of Magic Kingdom, I always walk out the same side. I walk in the right side. I walk out the right side. I don't know why I do it other than the fact that I'm a bit of a weirdo, but that's just sort of the things that I do. And I think there's probably, if I thought about it, there are probably other unconscious or subconscious uh, traditions and superstitions that I probably made. I like the fact that a lot of you are talking about the boathouse is your tradition. It's not my tradition because I don't like, as despite, 
rumors to the contrary. I don't sort of go, it's not like an every time thing, like I need to go go to the boathouse or else where it starts to become almost superstition over tradition. Jason says, "I'm ha- this is exactly what I needed today. You and me both, brother. I was just, I had a, a meeting the other day with somebody and I was explaining to her why live video is so powerful because even I'm exhausted today. Like I am, I was dragging today in a big way but there's something about when live video goes on that just you energize me so very much. It's why I love this. Um, uh, It's why I love live video so, so very much. So a lot of people are talking about some of their uh, food. Lou Grilly says, first time watching, I was gonna say, Lou, I know your name. We met you and me, Becky, in the studios a few years back. We walked through one man's room. Yeah, I was like, I recognize your uh, your name, <laughs> Becky, is now singing Tradition. Hopefully you're not singing um, If I Were a Rich Man. You had a little, 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 never mind. I'm not going to go on and uh, <laughs> so Sue Passauer has a new friendship and relationship with Chet, if you know, you know. Matthew Wilhelm says, we always get beignets at Fort, Port Orleans French Quarter as soon as we get there. Karen says, always to Magic Kingdom, first day and last day, which is I. Like, I think it's the way to do it, right? You sort of bookend your trip where it all began in the, in the first park and the last park. So I, I really dig that. Lou says, must do every trip. Flag retreat ceremony always brings the emotions. I love that. I love, and I love the fact that it's a tradition and a must do and a must see because I think so many people have never seen it before. And I think it should be something that is part of your tradition. Sue Pass Hour of Mouse Fan Travel fame, says, I walk down Main Street, turn, wait a minute. If you walk down Main Street and you turn left to Tomorrowland, something's wrong. Your Main Street is backwards. You're going to turn right into Tomorrowland. Uh, No idea why, just what I do. And that's it. Sometimes these traditions, I think, Sue, they form for no sort of specific reason, but it's your, like, I'm the opposite. I, I don't know why, I just sort of feel the need to go counterclockwise. Like, it's too early in the morning for Tomorrowland. Like, I'm not, I have to sort of graduate to get up to Tomorrowland. Uh, Deborah says, I always ride Spaceship Earth first whenever I go to Epcot. I know, I should never have shown. Jeff C is now going to take those images of me on Main Street USA and do God knows what. He's going to put it into AI, and there's just going to be some weird iterations. Uh Jeff says, food and wine is now a tradition before and or after Momentum. It's the best conference I've ever been a part of. Oh, thank you, brother. I love you, man, and, and I appreciate you so, so very much. Uh, Hannah says, my dad started a tradition called the two-week cookie. He buys a cookie at Disney to take home and freeze to thaw two weeks before the next trip. It keeps the magic feeling close. And com- I love that. I love that. I love that you have that thing that not only connects you to your past trip, but makes you look forward to your next one as well. Um, Carlos says, we have 13 photos of my daughter through the years at the Tree of Life signed by the path. See, like years from now, when you and she get to go back and look on that, it's going to be priceless. And hopefully that's a tradition. She'll be able to continue with her family as well. I think I think that's beautiful. I, I dig that. Uh, Kristen says... First night dinner at the Boathouse. That's a good way to kick off a vacation. First and last park days at Magic Kingdom. Always a new Christmas ornament. Last ride of the trip is always a grand circle tour on the railroad from Main Street Station. Kristen, I love every single part of that because each one has, I think, sort of a a Disney meaning and it probably has a personal meaning for you. Deborah says, I always get a churro toffee square. Back, uh, at Disneyland, I always have to stop and say, thank you, Walt, for creating Club 33 as I depart. Uh, Beth Ann says, uh, Olivia's at Old Key West. Uh, Don McCann, Don McCann is OG DisneyWorldTrivia.com. I still have at least a couple of pictures of myself and other DisneyWorldTrivia.comers at the spot on Main Street, at least one of them. with Don, I remember, I mean, vaguely, I couldn't tell you what year it is, but I remember being there and take a picture it was like you and maybe like amanda and or pat and a few other people taking photos and now i mean don we're talking probably 2005 2006 somewhere you know that that long ago so 
Uh, Emily says, the troll with the giant nose in the Norway gift shop, I have to take a picture with him every single time. Again, it doesn't necessarily have to be something like hugely like emotional or sentimental, but it's just, just this thing that you do. Uh, Kendall Foreman of WDW Radio blog and podcast. Kendall, we need to do another show soon, by the way. We have to take a picture with the snowman at Disney's Hollywood Studios. I'm so scared we're going to arrive sometime and it's going to be gone. I think that happens with all of us. There are these things that we do and we see a construction wall go up or we hear about changes that are coming and are afraid that are going to take this thing away that potentially is meaningful to us, right? Whether it is a food item, it's a place, it's an attraction, or even something as simple as a location that you go. Ashley, every time my mom and I, your mom is wonderful, by the way. She is a treasure. Go to Disneyland and Walt Disney World. We have to ride the teacups. We even call unposed photos that capture pure joy teacup moments. Ashley, I love that you have this thing and that you have this thing with your mom. Like, and it's something as simple and wonderful as just riding the teacups together. Like, that's what I mean. These things don't have to be expensive. They don't have to be monetary at all. You don't have to buy a magnet or an ornament or a souvenir or Mickey ears or whatever it is. It could just be something that you do. So Jennifer Smith says we have to do Seven Dwarfs Mine Train as our last ride on Magic Kingdom every single time. And we sort of plan, like we make our plans for the day or the weekend or our vacation around these things. Anytime you start off by saying mine is slightly crazy, I'm going to have to read it out. My husband and I need to do Irish car <laughs> I don't even know what an Irish car bomb is, but I can just sort of probably figure out what it has to do with. You do Irish car bombs with a stranger at Rosen Crown. It's our so Courtney's Irish car bomb. Is that a shot of um, Irish whiskey that's dropped into a beer, or am I get? I'm not a huge drinker. I'm sort of. I, I may have heard this before, but I love the fact that you do it with a stranger and you sort of make a little bit of magic for and with somebody. Uh, Ashley Scarpa says, we go to the Lego store at Disney Springs the first night and build the Lego during our trip. Oh, that's so cool. My son is 21. We still, oh, that's really cool. I, I love the fact that you do it while you're on the trip. I don't know how you get it home. How do you, now I imagine you like you're building this thing and you're, you're like, it's it's sitting there in your room like, okay, well, how do we get this on the plane? But maybe you drive. <laughs> so hopefully, you're, or you're building something that are, very uh, small and portable. Liz says we get a new Christmas ornament. We also do Peter Pan, my mom's favorite, as she is the grandma now. And then Small World, her mom's favorite, as the first two rides we do when we get into the parks. I love these things that are that are generational, that are passed down from, from generation to generation. Uh, Catherine says, I always went on Horizons first. See, there's part of the problem, right? Horizons goes away. What do you do to sort of take the place of that um, of that attraction or the, or that thing that is lost. So Kim same way says, sadly, my tradition is no longer an option with the reservation system, but the day that we arrived, we'd get on the first bus that came and that was the park we would spend our first few hours. Oh, so it was luck of the draw. Whatever sort of was, you were just literally rolling the dice, whatever bus showed up, that's the one that you were getting on and that was the park that you were going to. Um, yeah. Amber Bramble says, my tradition for the last eight years seems to be a Mangello search party. Um, I could probably help you with that one next time you come. We'll coordinate forces and maybe we'll we'll see if we can prearrange a Mangello appear, a Mangello sighting wherever it is that you have to be looking. Richard says, the newish, a, a newish, not Jewish, a newish tradition, flight of passage always, the first attraction on vacation. Sue says, does anyone else feel that they have to ride the original rides every trip? Peter Pan, Haunted Mansion, Small World for Nostalgia Person. I, I'm, I am, I live here. Um, I, I don't go to Disney a ton. And for example, when I go to Magic Kingdom, I'm usually not going to ride attractions, right? Maybe if somebody's coming to town and they want to ride Tron or do something like that. But that's usually where I gravitate to. I'll gravitate towards the classics. Like I'll ride the TTA. Not, it's not like an, I can't call it a tradition because it's not like a, I must do this every time. But that would probably be the one that I would choose. TTA or Haunted Mansion as the 
traditional, memorable, sentimental one that I would ride. Becky Mangan says, I have to visit the exact spot in front of the castle where I told my now husband that I loved him. Ugh, yuck. I take a picture of my foot on the line and send it to my husband if he isn't with me. I send, I take a picture of my foot. Like I just, I have this vision of like Becky's husband getting a picture of a foot in Disney World go and to go, aw. But hey, you go do you. It's whatever. These traditions are very, very personal to you. And that's the thing, right? It's meaningful to you. It might seem ridiculous to somebody else, but these are things that mean something to you. Gary Witt says, Peter Pan was my mom's favorite. So Peter Pan first. We always get a mini Mickey kitchen sink to sit and eat while I watch the fireworks, says Kendall Foreman. It seems that my tradition the past few years has been go to Gideon's and walk away head down because of the line. Uh, virtual queue, brother. It's try and try and hit that virtual queue when that you can. Grace Corbis says, walking into the Magic Kingdom, hopefully to the train's whistle, a stop at the flag, and a ride on the Main Street jitney vehicles is just perfection because that brings me back to the way it was and joyful memories. See? Like, that's it. It's the simple things that hold meaning to us. And, like, I think no matter how many times you go, those can be the things that put a little bit of a smile on your face. Revisiting somewhere that you went with whoever it might be, whether it's a parent, a spouse, a child, a friend, um, or just doing those. Like, I rode... It's funny you said that when I went to Disneyland a few weeks ago and I rode one of the Main Street vehicles, like I had this huge, I was by myself, by the way, I had this huge, stupid grin on my face because I was like, like, I just love this. Like, it's so simple and it's so wonderful and it's so just sort of old school Disneyland. So Grace, I very, very much get it. Um so Heather says, my traditions at Disneyland, as I always went to the park from the left, it feels weird going right, and I don't know why. Heather, I know exactly what you mean. When I walk out of Magic Kingdom, I need to walk out on the right-hand side. Every now and then, if I'm really exhausted and I'm making a, a left of the contemporary, I, I it won't freak me out. Like, if I go outside the, the left, um, uh, you know, sort of underpass, but I, I do just sort of normally have this thing that, that it's just this thing that we do. Kyle says, I always get the filet sliders. I don't know if that's really tradition as opposed to just really hard to get away from something that's so, I haven't been to the boathouse, by the way, in months. If only somebody, anybody would go, to, I mean, I could go by myself. Now you got me thinking about filet sliders. Uh, Hannah Burt says, I, find, I tried Jelly Rolls a few years ago and I have to go every single time. I love that place. Uh, a lot of Christmas ornaments. I see a number of Christmas ornaments. Beatrice Dennis says, I like to pause at the part sta partner statue every time to say thanks for starting this magic. Isn't it interesting how many, whether it's the partner statue, whether it is um, the firehouse, whether it's the train, whether it's insert wherever your favorite place is here, we feel almost compelled to make this singular, solitary, often inward expression of thanks to Walt, right? It's almost, it's almost like akin to a, like a prayer. Like we have to stop and just sort of make this sort of expression in our minds to Walt. We don't have to say it out loud. There's no sort of anything... But it's important to us, and it, it almost does become tradition, right? Whether it's Becky looking up and saying thanks at, at, at the lamp in, in Disneyland, whether it's stopping over at the partner statue, wherever your place, wherever your thing may be, I love the fact that Walt is, that Walt the, the man is so much a part of that as well. Uh, Jimena Perez is watching from Argentina. I love that. I'd love to say thank you, but I am probably going to, I would love to say thank you in the appropriate language, but I would probably ruin it says, but Amanda says, I don't think I have any ritual, but I know that some people touch Cinderella Castle to return to Disney. I visited Disney 
1990, my first time with two years old. And that's what I was talking about him. And like exactly those things, there's those places that we sometimes feel compelled to touch, whether it is the castle, whether it is the, the Walt and Roy statue, whether it is, you know, whatever your sort of place is, we just feel the need to have that tactile, like physical connection. And it's our sort of internal, personal acknowledgement um, that we're here or that we're grateful or whatever it might be. Daniel Hughes says, we take a family photo in the exact same spot in front of Uptown Jewelers on East Center Street. Start out because it was a place to get a picture that is never crowded, right? So sometimes it's just, you know, the same thing for me with the spot. I'm sure my dad didn't think that in front of the watch shop is going to have, it has nothing to do with watches. It probably was just a spot that, you know, that there was nobody else on the sidewalk and they took it, but it sort of becomes your spot it becomes your place and it becomes meaningful and i think that's it i think it's whatever these things are that become meaningful to you you know i there was somebody else who told me once that every single time and i had this conversation too you know who, who carries change anymore right not really a lot of people but i know somebody who when they go they make sure they bring change because they have to throw a coin into the Cinderella fountain wishing well. Like it's just the thing that she needs to do every single time that she goes. So she has to ensure that she has cash to get change or bring change with her so she can do it. It's not, and I don't think it has anything to do with the wish per se, but it's just this thing that she has come to do every single time that she's there. Jason says, I have to take a picture with my son in a Viking helmet at the shop in Norway. He's 16 now, so it does take a little bit of convincing. Jason, I'm sure when he's about 22 and he's there with his friends, he'll be hitting that. No, <laughs> he might be putting that Viking helmet on and, and making his way around uh, the promenade on his own. I Usually for me, if I see people in Viking helmets and sombreros and things like that, I'm usually sure it's not going to end well for them. Um Carlos says, my wife and I started, my I'm sorry, my wife and daughter started a tradition about four trips ago called mother-daughter breakfast. My mother-in-law was there last trip and thought she was going. My wife was like, nope. Those things too. And sometimes it could be something as simple as that. You know, a father-son, mother-daughter, brother-sister, whatever it is, going somewhere just on their own, even if it means breaking away. Even for some people, the tradition is going to Disney, you know, a dad and son, mother, daughter. Um, yes, you go as a, as a whole family, but sometimes, and I, and I know people that do this still as adults. Like I've started to do that with my son. It's not Disney, but like, you know, we've gone to New York comic con every year for the past three or four years. It's become a tradition and it almost stops being about going to comic con per se. It It's, Go, oh, I'm getting choked up. It's it's about having this thing that you do together. So it could be going to Disney or it could just be doing that thing that you do in Disney. The, the mother-daughter tea, going to the spa, going for a walk, taking out a, a boat, whatever it might be. Those are the little things that I think are the memories that become most meaningful years in the future. Angela Batista says, I always need to sit on Main Street and just soak it all in. It was my home on the college program, and I need to reminisce every trip. Angela, I feel you. Um, there is something for me, too, about, especially in places like Main Street, just finding a place to stop and watch, and I listen. Sometimes I'll just sort of close my eyes. I'm not sleeping, but I'll close my eyes, and I'll just listen to the sounds of the music, of the horse-drawn trolley. I love hearing the sound of kids laughing, um, especially in places like Main Street. I'm like, that's it. Like, this is, you know, we, we sometimes, we're so focused on what we see or smell or taste that we just, we don't listen enough. And, and remember, sort of post-pandemic, at the very beginning, those sounds were... There were sounds that were missing and then there were sounds that were more pronounced. So the music was more pronounced. Some of those, the background audio and other things were pronounced because there wasn't sort of that, 
that sort of dull cacophony of of human voices, but it's also what was missing. And it was very, very eerie to a certain degree because that is such an important part of the Disney experience is hearing the voices and the conversations and the laughters and sometimes the meltdowns of other people as well. Uh, Denise says, we do Coco... We do Coco Boulevard days. A Coco. I don't know what any of those words mean other than Coco and Steakhouse 71. What is a Boulevardier? Oh, I, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong too. I have a tough enough time with English. It doesn't matter. Kenneth says it's tradition before we do anything in the Magic Kingdom, we have to go to the partner statue. There you go, Kenneth. We have to go to the partner statue to honor Walt, right? We We sort of feel that we need to sort of make this outward expression and gesture to the representation, whether it's the place, it's the statue, whatever, of the man that made it all happen. And I love that. And I think that is beautiful. My sister has a Mickey Rice Krispy, Krispy Treat for breakfast on our first day. It's carb loading. And I think that's, it's smart and healthy. Heather says so many traditions. So many have been added over the years, a quiet morning with coffee outside the plaza in Magic Kingdom. Yeah, I think... And, and so the, the whole point of this is um, it's not about what the tradition is. It's starting to have an, or create them or sometimes even we may, we might have traditions that we don't even recognize that we've been doing. Like, yeah, you know what? Every time I go, like Disneyland, I never set out to have a corn dog every time I go. But I was like, yeah, like every time I've gone to Disneyland, I've gotten a corn dog from the Little Red Wagon I'm just going to keep having corn. I mean, it's a win-win for everybody, but it's, I, I wanted to have a corn dog from the little red wagon. And when I was there last time, it was like, Hey, you need to make sure you get this done before you go because, and I think that's more tradition than superstition, but who has ever had a bit of a, I, I can't walk out that side of the exit because I need to walk out the right side. Why? I don't know, but it's sort of the, these weird superstitions that we have. Um, let's see. When we did our first vacation here, our first day wasn't in a park, but in Disney Springs. Jackie says we have to find the hidden Mickeys in our room, even if we already know where they are. Refurbs have added new charm to this tradition. Kevin Chase says we stay in the same room at Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge, club level at Christmas time. We purchase a Christmas ornament, must do rides with a monorail TTA, and a lazy boat ride anywhere on property. So I dig that, Kevin, that the room itself is part of the tradition, especially because of Christmas time, when you're leaving your home to sort of go to Disney as your second home, having that comfort of being in that same place almost gives you a sense of ownership of it, even though obviously we, you don't own it, but you own it for those few days. You own it during that time of year. And there's something wonderfully familiar and comforting about it and I think at that at that time of year, it makes it even more special. So I, I dig that. I, I love that a lot. I think that's uh, I think that's super super cool. Um, probably a little challenging sometimes, right, to make sure you get that um, the same time. Alice McClintock Lewis says it's a small world. It was my mother's favorite ride. My family now must ride it every single time. I think we do that too. I think we do things to honor those who can't be with us for one reason or another. Um, like my, my dad loved it. I wish I knew more. Like I wish I remembered more, but like I remember my dad loved um, if you had wings, which obviously I can't do anymore. And I know we love the monorail, but I don't sort of have that. Um, I don't have this place that I can go, but my tradition, I, and I'm realizing this as I'm saying it out loud. My tradition is I try and act like my dad did for me and my brother, for my kids and for other people in the type of experience he wanted us to have and his generosity and the the laughter that we had, um, which made me love coming to this place so much and obviously brought me to the place that I am today. So I, I 
honor my father not by going to a specific a specific place or doing a specific thing, but hopefully acting in a way that would carry on the tradition that he had of just being who he was. That probably makes no sense to anybody else other than me and my parents. And even my dad's probably going, what are you talking about? What do you mean? It made sense to me when I say it. Uh, Heather says, I always made a trail mix for the parks and it has becoming, it has become a tradition. Uh, Dan Boyle says one of my earliest memories was uh, with her family was going to La Cellier for dinner. So we always go there for a meal, no matter how long or short our trip is. <laughs> Amber says my tradition is 7 a.m. virtual queues, but really my kid loves Guardians. Uh, Disneyland, I have to ride Mater. <laughs> Becky, when I was there in Disneyland, I said the same thing. I don't know if I was live or I was who I was with, but I talk about how, and it's not like a tradition because it's like, but when we're there together, we ride it because I remember just like the ridiculous laughter that we had in that attraction and trying to crush each other while we were we were spinning. Because the first time we did it, it was a, a purely authentic, like didn't care about anything, just enjoyment of this ridiculous, simple ride. So uh, I'm not cheating on the boathouse. The boathouse and I have an open relationship. So the boathouse understands that I sometimes do need to go and eat other places much like I'm, I'm going to be in Disney Springs tomorrow night eating, but not at, not at Boathouse. So Terry says, my husband always visits Tom Sawyer Island. Terry, that's a commitment, right? Tom Sawyer Island is, is a commitment because you got to like wait online to get on the raft, to get over, wait online, to get on the raft, to get back. But I, I love the fact that he has his place uh mike says we visit crystal palace every time and we bring our buffet pants mike at some point um in life you will realize that all your pants should be buffet pants all of my pants i'm finding as i get older like i think all of my pants now have elastic waistbands because it doesn't matter but it's just easier um it's just easier that way so jason says my daughter has to get a, a starbucks drink in how to get a Starbucks drink in every park and then get a photo pass photo with them. That's called synergy. Starbucks is probably very, very happy that you, um, that you do that. Make a wish in the wishing well to come back. Um, I'm quickly going through the superstition that, so, so yeah, so Joseph makes a good point. There are some superstitions that cast members have as well, like telling George goodnight on Pirates of the Caribbean, otherwise the ride breaks down the next day. There's also some traditions on Tower of Terror um, about talking to the ventriloquist dummy. Like, th there's a few others that I think are really are more um, cast member specific. So it's not just us, right? It, it's the cast that do that as well. Gary Witt is taking his over to uh, Disney Cruise Line. We have to watch the sail away from the top deck. Oh, I'm sorry, right, to leaving Castaway Key, hearing the ship horns, usually heading back to Port Canaveral that night allows for a few key minutes of grateful appreciation that we're there, one of the highlights of the cruise each and every time. Um, yeah, I mean, Cruise Line, same thing. Like, I have to get chicken tenders. I have to have, sometimes I miss it. And when I miss it, I mean, I miss, I don't do it. And then I miss the fact that I didn't do it. But like, I don't know, even if I'm not hungry, which is never, I'll order chicken tenders on Disney Cruise Line. Um, Beatrice says, I know somebody who buys a balloon for a child every trip because she remembers when she was a child and her parents said, aw, like you feel bad for the child whose parents said no. You know what? It's funny because I thought, there was one time I thought about doing that too. I was in a store um, in Walt Disney World, and a kid was sort of melting down because she wanted something and the parents said no. And I thought about doing the same thing. I'm like, I'm going to pick up that plush and I'm going to buy it. And I, But I was always afraid to do it because I'm like, well, maybe the parent is trying to teach the kid something. Maybe I don't, you know, maybe the, the kid did something wrong or or was getting spoiled or, or whatever it is. So I don't want to potentially negate the message that the parent might be trying to give the kid and then all of a sudden like dad gets mad at me because no the point is not for her to get the the mickey plush the point for her is to not get it so i just got myself a churro and kept on going 
Um, let's see. My kids and teenagers have to watch Disney World sing-along songs. So Allison, oh my God, when we were, when we still lived in New Jersey, my kids did as well. The, the sing-along song VH test tapes, which I still have in my garage, by the way. Uh, those are sort of on repeat because that's what kids do. But that's what they watched to sort of get themselves ready, get themselves ready to go. I remember, you know, you're talking, this is probably 2006, 2007. So a lot of what we have access to now in terms of, of video online was not available. So that's um, that's what they would watch. I love that. I haven't thought about the sing-along songs in a long, long, long time. So uh, let me see. A couple more before we call it a night. Um Tradition from Andrew Milan. I appreciate the vulnerability and authenticity. Just crying as I walk down Main Street because I am in my happy place. Uh, Andrew, I will tell you, the day that I stop crying at certain things at Disney, because I still do, um, is the day that I realize it's time to, to move on to something else. Like, I think it's supposed to elicit that emotion, right? It's You're supposed to be okay with that. You're supposed to be okay with the way Disney makes you feel. And, and I was talking, I had a conversation the other day with some folks about like Disney movies and, and what has been coming out and, and to a certain degree, some of that being missing. I'm like, I haven't feel, I'm not getting the feel that I want to get from a Disney movie. It's not making me like cry out of joy. It's not making me walk out of the theater and want to buy a ticket and go back again to see it the next night. Like it hasn't elicited that level of emotion that they, that they have in the past, but yet the parks still do that for me. Like I still get teary watching certain parades or nighttime spectaculars or hearing a certain song or if they're out of cozy cones, like what there are certain things that still get that level of emotion because that's it. Like, it's why we keep going back. It has nothing to do with the attractions. It has to do with the emotional connection that we have. Kevin says, whenever we start a day at the studios, we always head to Trolley Car Cafe, also known as Starbucks, grab a coffee and breakfast bite to eat, head to the fountain at the intersection of Sunset Boulevard to take it all in, right? You sit right there. You're right on the corner of Hollywood and Sunset and just watch people go by. Some going by a little bit faster to try and get to Rise of the Resistance, but I, I get it. Like, you've got your spot that you like to go and just watch the world pass you by. Like, that is your Main Street bench. Your Main Street bench can be anywhere in the parks. I love the fact that um, that you have that. So, uh, Casey Corner is a must-do. Okay, so a Coco Boulevardier is a cocktail uh, made with a special whiskey that you can only get in Walt Disney World. Learn something new every single time. I will have to remember that when we finally do, when when Becky finally comes here so we can do the lounge review. I've been waiting for literal years. The tears that are down my face are because of how long I've been waiting to do the top 10 lounges in Walt Disney World. If only there was a Becky, some Becky, that would come and do that with me. This is where the cursing... Uh, texts are going to come in let's see um let me do a couple more and then we will um we will call it an early night uh lauren gaggioli wait lauren gaggioli of momentum fame lauren gaggioli formerly of higher scores test prep now of laurengaggioli.com and momentum presenter extraordinaire if you didn't think that Search engine optimization and keywords could be could be fascinating, and um, and and Lauren did it at Momentum. But she said, "I did Alien Saucers. Thank you for not abbreviating." With Chris in this time, and we were laughing so hard that someone started recording us. Please, for the love of sweet baby Jesus, send me that video if you were the person recording, because I would pay good money to uh, to see that. Magically, Vanessa which I love that name, by the way, says, every morning I take a photo of my coffee cup on my balcony or stateroom veranda on a cruise. I dig that. I dig that. I don't do it every time, but I do it sometimes because sometimes it's that simple 
moment. And and I've done the same thing because you're like, like I'm relaxed. Like I have, a, I have a very, very tough time relaxing. <laughs> Again, those of you who are friends with me, very close to me, know this to be true. I, I, I'm, I, I really, would, but there are like those moments that you're able to sort of grab and be like, you know what? I'm not distracted. I'm not on my phone. My brain isn't going. I'm just enjoying this simple cup of coffee as I'm looking out over the water, as I'm looking out over Castaway Key. So I, I totally get it. Uh, Nadine, I dig this because it's super, super obscure. I always put a coin in Italy's mouth of truth for absolutely no reason. So Italy's mouth of truth is obviously in the Italy pavilion. If you're facing the back of the pavilion, sort of in that that first sort of side alleyway, if you go to the left uh, behind the crystal shop, there's what's called the Mouth of Truth, and it's, I, I won't go into too much historical detail, but in ancient Roman times, it was a place that you could go and you could make like logic a, a complaint or you could put things in there or like, um, I think you're also, it, it, not like confess stuff, but I think you're able to like just... Um, there was, there was another element to it as well, but there is one there. There is a mouth of truth there. I think we talked about this on, oh, when I did the, um, when I was with Maria and we did a show about how authentic is the Italy Pavilion, we walked through and she taught us all about, but I love that. You don't hear a lot of people talking about the mouth of truth in Italy. So brava, I dig that. Uh, Colleen says, my dad gave me the love of Disney, uh, took my kids now third generation on his favorite ride, Carousel of Progress, even told him about the old song, Now is the Time, Now is the Best Time, be it a time of joy uh, or strife. I love Now is the Time. Now is the Time reminds me of my, of my dad. And I know uh, Great Big Beautiful Tomorrow is sort of the song. It's the one that the Sherman brothers preferred and, and Now is the Time was was a very sort of time specific put no pun intended sort of generational song but when i think about going to disney world with my dad and my mom that is sort of the, the song that resonates in my mind i actually love now is the time I, I dig that song a lot so um <laughs> becky says apparently it's tradition or you're just really hungry because we have to visit all the popcorn carts in Dizzy Sea and get the little green men mochi because we did it the two times we've been there. And Becky, fortunately, you hate doing all of those things. You were so not on board. I literally remember standing in front of the hotel and then we sat at those little metal tables and you were just gushing over the little mochi green men. But it's fine. I don't mind falling on the sword for that one because yes, if going to Tokyo Dizzy Sea and eating all the popcorn and little mochi is is, I I will be happy to own that. Uh, we have to go back, by the way. Um, all right, let's see. Let me go through a couple more. Um, the spaghetti. Oh, I forgot about the spaghetti popcorn over by the spaghetti popcorn was over by um, Soren. Right, it was over by. Soren. Lauren Gagioli has a sing along on DVDs for her kiddos. I would I, I would love to see those again. Um, because that would probably those would probably make me cry only because I would think about watching those with my kids. And yes, sing along with them. Uh Giovanni says, Epcot has to be our first park we have to go to no matter what time we arrive. It may be more OCD than it is tradition, but um, it's okay, man. Whatever your reason is, I love the fact that you have it. Lauren also stands for a minute, sends a thanks to Walt while looking at his lamp at Disneyland every single time. Again, I, I love all of the Walt connections. Uh, Todd, a must-do every trip, Casey's Corner, mini corn dogs. Does Casey's Corner... I don't... It's been so long since I've been there. Do they have the, the hot cheese back? Because I know it went away for a while. It, it was it was a sad time. It was the dark times. And then did they return the, the hot cheese, like, pump thing? I, I, clearly, I haven't been to Magic Kingdom in, in a long, long time. I, I like Becky's reaction when they say things just to sort of make her head explode. <laughs> uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Quick, a few other ones. Um 
Giovanni just put his hand in the real mouth in Italy, and I'm assuming the one you mean in the in the real Italy. Um, Deborah Mickens, yes, we are doing group trip tri tri group trip to Japan. We're looking at 2025, so stay tuned. Connor Brown, also not just a good guy and a heck of a paleontologist, but also a presenter at Momentum this past weekend. He says a big family tradition is going on the People Mover. My mom worked there during a college program, and from it, I can see Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, which I worked on during my college program. Memories from our cast member days beat memories from our family trips. Connor Brown, right here. I can't see it, but I'm touching my heart. Um, I, I love that. I love that you've got your CP memories. Your mom's got... Um, your mom has her CP memories. You have your cast member memories um, as well, and you can share those moments with her together. So uh, let me see. Tom says, how can I forget listening to Lou's podcast on the 18-hour drive the whole time? Kids loved it. Uh, Tom, if you judge loving it by falling asleep in the back of the car, then so be it. Uh, the, dulcet tones of, the dulcet tones of Lou Mangello are meant to help Put your children to sleep. Plastic cheese was and will always be a lost wonder of Walt Disney World. So uh, Joshua Smith wants to see the return of the Princess Becky puppet uh, at D23 in 2024. Uh, the Princess Becky puppet may or may not be waiting for her triumphant return in the um, in the prize closet. But all right, that is uh, this was a lot of fun. It was fun for me because I loved hearing your traditions. Hopefully it sparked some memories from for you, maybe things that you look forward to doing next time that you come or maybe things that you haven't thought about. Maybe there's a tradition that you want to start uh, for yourself, for your family, for your friends, for your kids in memory of someone who maybe brought you to Walt Disney World or the Disney parks when you were younger and isn't able to do that with you again. Um, all right, just a couple of quick reminders while I am thinking about it, if I can find it. Um, don't forget, if you haven't checked out our top 10 spooky spots in Walt Disney World from the archives last week, um, I'd love for you to comment on what your favorite spooky spot is, either here on Facebook or over on uh, Instagram. Don't forget that we still have availability and our special mouse fan travel exclusive discount for our Nat Geo expedition, December 9th through the 16th. It is coming up super fast and I can not wait for that. In addition to the river cruise, we also have not one, but two Disney cruises coming up. Our Halloween on the high seas and our visit to Lighthouse Point on the Disney Magic, October 21st through the 26th. Halloween on the high. I already know, at least for right now, what my costume is going to be. And by, by your request, we're also going on the Disney Treasure, February 8th through the 15th, 2025. Just a few weeks after the Treasure launch, launches, it is going to be one of her inaugural voyages. It's going to be the WWE Radio 20th anniversary, and we get to spend Valentine's Day together, which is romantic and weird all at the same time. Uh, to find out more and get a free no-obligation quote on either or both, you can visit wdwradio.com slash cruises. Again, to do, um, if you want to join us on any of our cruises and events, you need to book through our friends over at mousefantravel. Dot com. Um, there was something else I wanted to share. And of course, I can't remember right now what it is. Um,
Sorry. If there's ever anything I can do to... Wow, he's not looking at my text. You're muted. All right. Well, forget everything I said. I don't know. How did that happen? Fat fingers. Fat fingers and lots of stuff going on. Um, it doesn't matter. You saw the graphics. You know what I was probably going to say. <laughs> this, uh, this is what happens when I'm really exhausted and the brain and the eyes and everything's not working. And it's also why I love live video. I think you caught most of it, right? I think you caught about the archives, thanking you because I love you. None of this happens without you. I'm sincerely grateful for every single day. Uh, Mousefantravel.com. If I can help you somehow, please let, please let me know. I know. Sorry about that. Um, this is where I start getting the, the text messages. Do you see why you need help, Bungelo? You need to start accepting and, and asking for help. I know. But I think you got the point. I think you got the point. I thank you. I love you. You're amazing. Mouse fan travel, uh, archive, nation, hello fresh, whatever. <laughs> As Mike DeKinney says, muting myself is now a tradition with WW Radio. Um, yeah, sometimes I, I don't see that that little, it's a teeny, teeny, tiny little mute indicator that I just didn't see. So that's all right. It, uh, at least at least it happened at the end of the show and not during the entire episode. So that, I think, is my cue that I need to put on my little jammies and uh, maybe put on a, a Disney sing-along video and get to sleep at some semblance of an early night tonight. So uh, with that, uh, I love you. I appreciate you. Uh, have a good night, and uh, I will see you again real soon. Now I can mute myself.